What is an adventurer? When you think of your player character in your fantasy TTRPG, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Is it a dungeon delver, an explorer, a hero, someone who fights for truth, honor, or is generally a prowess at magic or martial combat? Well, what if it wasn't any of that? What if instead of highly optimized characters in your D&D 5e game, we went back to the classics of Dungeons and Dragons? Or, well, like, redux of classics like Beck Me and other TTRPGs from the past 30 years. These games would include adventures where people used 10-foot poles, there was no dark vision, NPCs died all the time, combat was sometimes a last resort, and magic was sporadic and unpredictable. Yes. I am talking about Dungeon Crawl Classics if you've already read the title. So today, I'm going to be discussing why I think DCC is an endearing game and why every player, especially lover of fantasy TTRPGs like D&D, should give it a try. Also, if you are enjoying my content and or if you just like DCC in general, feel free to like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon down below if you feel like supporting me. Anyhow, let's get into talking firstly about what is Dungeon Crawl Classics. But if you rather skip that and get right down to my own personal feelings on it, go to here. DCC or Dungeon Crawl Classic is from Goodman Games and harks back to the first edition of Dungeons and Dragons modules in content and style. You're not playing larger than life characters with in-depth backstories, as the book states in every DCC module and material. Dungeon Crawl Classics don't waste your time with long-witted speeches, weird campaign settings, or NPCs who aren't meant to be killed. Each adventure is a 100% good, solid dungeon crawl. The monsters you know, the traps you fear, and the secret doors you know are there somewhere. And Bob the World Builder and several other awesome YouTubers have already talked about DCC extensively, so I'm not going to tread too much on already discussed topics, since there's already plenty of others out there. Rather, I'm going to focus on the key components of what defines DCC. DCC is not entirely, firstly, an old school renaissance tabletop role playing game. It has an ascending armor class similar to 5e. Things such as attacks, saves, and skill rolls are used with a 20 sided die. The other infamous and well known thing DCC is known for is their zero level and funnel. And finally, the game's focus is less on min-max combos, though that is certainly possible with some builds. I'm looking at you, rogue. And more so on puzzles, tricks, and traps. So, if you don't like things such as spells with randomized effects, loads of randomized tables on character creation, unbalanced combat encounters, and a game that is generally less worried about story and plot, then this game is not for you. So then, what's the buy-in for Dungeon Crawl Classics? Well, I think it comes down to several things. First is, you don't have to wait for an adventure. Second being, there's loads of existing material. Third being, it's zero level and funnel experience. And fourth being, the progression from zero to level one and beyond. In D&D 5e, it sometimes feels like you have to wait for epic stuff to happen. At first, second, and third level, you're often fighting low level grunts such as giant rats, to bandits and goblins and kobolds. But in DCC, you don't have to wait to feel epic. Because the cool thing about Dungeon Crawl Classics is that it does not concern itself with combat or trap balance. There is no challenge rating. The EXP system even states each encounter is worth from 0 to 4 EXP. And those XP are not earned merely by killing monsters, disarming traps, looting treasure, or completing a quest. Rather, successfully surviving encounters earn the character's XP in DCC RPG. You don't gain XP inherently from killing monsters, which in its own right is kinda macabre. Rather, surviving and doing cool stuff will earn you XP. That means your adventures can be wild and fun, and you're not limited as a GM or player on what encounters you can do. You can negotiate with a green dragon for mercy, sprint through ancient museums while being chased down by mummies, or gamble for your life in a CD casino, or go interdimensional jumping between planes looking for magical toast. All these options are more than available to you at even level one or level zero. Whatever you choose and the players choose, 
you can start playing the game you want and not feel restricted by an imaginary CR level. And yeah, you might think, well, I could technically do that in 5e, why don't I just have my level 3 party fight a vampire spawn? And well, yes, you could do that. But 5e's main core mechanic is combat. So when players get into combat and they can't beat the monster that they want, there's no payoff or reward. But in DCC, EXP and most certainly the rewards you get are not entirely from killing monsters. And in fact, I would argue you don't need to kill many monsters to even level from 1, 2, and 3. Another benefit to DCC is that there's loads of existing material. This game has been out actually about as long as D&D 5e, and there are a lot of scenarios. So if you're looking from horror to sci-fi to level zero funnels to extra content to add to your games, there's plenty of that. So for the homebrew folks and people who are looking for interesting items, classes, and ideas for DCC, you can get that similar fix if you like that kind of stuff. And next onto zero level and the funnel. If you've heard of DCC, you have heard of zero level and the funnel as part of the game, but I think these are grossly over exaggerated. In 5e, it feels like the epic adventures and awesome encounters with monsters and dungeons happens only when you get to a certain level. Or you notice how many of the encounters the GM gives you are specifically catered to your challenge rating. In fact, everything feels super regulated. Or you craft a super specific game because there's a semblance of balance in 5e, though I don't really think there is. Anyhow, in DCC, zero level play and beyond, you don't gotta worry about any of that crap. Zero level gets you right into awesome adventures as I mentioned before. You as a peasant are not limited to fighting rats in a basement or basic beasts like in 5e. Some modules have you fighting demon lords, evil wizards, or horrifying beastmen as you traverse deadly and dangerous dungeons. The joy is sending in peasants to fight in either A, creating cool plans to win, B, throwing in crappy studded peasants to hope your strongest survives, or C, doing a bit of both. A bit of both always works. This style of play forgoes writing a lengthy backstory and instead your backstory is from that funnel. So zero level is about playing unsuspecting nobodies who may have crappy stats through clever thinking, strategy, and lots of luck become adventurers. And the coolest thing about that zero to hero progression is the joy in playing plus one characters or level plus one characters. Plus one characters have access to unique crit tables skills specific to their class, and spells. All of their own randomized tables to give every character plenty of variety. That means you could play technically a team full of warriors and they all could have unique abilities, weapons, and alignments that change and affect how the world is around the game. And that is especially the case for characters like the wizard. Wizards can strip their body of their own strength and resources to cast powerful spells. This is called Spell Burn. Imagine team is on their last legs against a foul noble who's been harassing the town for months. The wizard can Spell Burn. They call to their archdemon or deity as they strip their own flesh to upcast their spell. You could just roll a d20 and fail your flaming hand spell, or you could use 15 of your strength to upcast and cast a devastating 180 arc of fire. Warriors have a mighty deed of arms, which is the equivalency of a fighter's battle master maneuver, but I think a little bit more loose. In fact, as the book states, there is no limit to the type of deeds that a warrior can perform. Any situation appropriate specialized attack should be encouraged. So the warrior can do blinding attacks, trips and throws, rallying, weapon specific deeds, there is no end to the variety. For instance, if you want your warrior to use their mighty deed to swing from one table to another to knock out an opponent or to cut off someone's limbs, then that is something you can do and you're not restricted by the game. And that's at level one. While the random tables will determine your spells, equipment, and so much for your character, the coolness of powerful spells, epic moments, and horrifying failures and fumbles all happen whether you're level one, or reach the level of epochs at level 10. And that's what I find endearing and beautiful about DCC. It's Gonzo's style of fun and enjoyment. It is through trial and tribulation, through bloodshed or negotiation, 
your dungeon delvers become smarter, braver, and more capable. At the end of your game, one shot, or campaign, you may realize in all that chaos, heroes are created. And just as fast as they are created, they can be taken away. Because villains win, the monsters and dungeons are cruel, and luck is an unfair d20 away. But there's something amazing about adventurers ready to test their luck and wit. And that go get em attitude is something that DCC does that not every other fantasy RPG can capture for me. So I recommend you try out DCC if you like silly tables, dungeon crawls, and a game that's not worried so much about balance and min-maxing, and instead on a good goofy dungeon crawl or hex crawl experience. But to watch a dungeon crawl, you might need a hex crawl as well. And fortunately, I have a video discussing an extremely useful tool for DMs that will help you save plenty of prep time for your next DCC or 5e campaign. And as always, I'm your average everyday queer host, Blurdy Disposition. Hope you all have a great day. Ciao!